Well, good morning and welcome to Edgewood Church. If we could at this time, if you're a candidate for baptism, if you could follow uh, Pastor Snow around to the back. Raise your hand, Pastor Snow. <laughs> if you're a candidate for baptism, please follow him at this time. And the rest of us, let's all stand and let's give God our best in worship this morning. Amen. Lift it up. 
exciting morning. We always love it when we get to do baptisms. It's just, it's just an awesome time in the Lord when we get to baptize those and, and proclaim that Jesus Christ is alive in their life. Amen. So we're glad to have you worshiping with us this morning. If you're a visitor of ours, we're glad to have you with us. If you would, there's a little place in the bulletin just to give us a little bit of information. We just want to reach out and tell you that we appreciate you joining us this morning. And if there's anything that the church can do for you, just write that down on there. And if anything else, we'll be happy to lift you up to the Lord in prayer. So we're glad to have you with us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we love you. And we just thank you so much for the opportunity this morning you've given us to worship your holy name, God. I pray that we do push aside everything else in our lives right now, God, and focus solely on you and give you our best in worship, God, because you gave your best for us, God. We love you, and we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for all things. Amen.
should be baptized. Jesus gave the Great Commission, and he said in Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20, he said, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And he said, Lo, I'm with you always. You see, all your life, before you come to know Christ, you're identified with the world. You're part of the world. But when you come to know Jesus Christ, you leave the world behind. You leave that life behind. It's, it's, it's symbolic of baptism. They'll be coming in on this side. They'll be, they'll be buried with him, like a death to self. They'll be buried with him in baptism. And they'll be raised to newness of life and go through to the new life in Christ. And uh, it's, it's 2 Corinthians 5.17. If any man be in Christ. Christ. For some of them, it will be maybe a first time uh, salvation. For some, it will be rededications. For some, it will be as a child, and they're, now they're being baptized or rebaptized, even. So it's a celebration service. So, what I like to do, the first thing that they need to hear when they come up out of the water is their church family supporting them. So, it's this amen and clapping and praise the Lord type of thing. So, on the, on the count of three, you, you do that, okay? One, two, three. Yeah. That's wonderful. They'll get that. And then the other thing, and, and um, some we have guests guests with us. Okay, some some people came to support uh, family uh, or friends, or if you're even in the church. When they come into the bab baptistry, um, even without me saying, because I'll forget. Why don't you stand? In, when, the, when that person comes in that, that you've come here for, or if you're family with or friends with, you support them, just go ahead and stand as a show of support for them, okay? All right. I'm going to ask Amber, bass singer. Amber, you come on in first. We'll go through the rail there. Wonderful. Amber, we're proud of you. Amber, do you love Jesus? I do. I do. Have you given your heart and life to Christ? Yes. When did you do that? Recently. Just recently. Recently she gave her life to Christ. <laughs> and you to I am. And you wish to be baptized. I wish to be baptized. Right. Amen. Hold your nose. Amber Bay Singer, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> This is Lindsay Harlan, and I'm going to ask I'm going to ask her mom Kelly to come into the baptistry also. Yeah, hold on, I'm proud of you. You love the Lord. You couldn't live for Him. Have you given your life to Christ? I have, as a child. As a child, she gave her life to Christ. Amen. And uh, you wish to be baptized? Hold your nose, Lindsay. Lindsay Harlan, I baptize you in the name of the Father. And uh, we're proud and we're thankful. Amen. Kelly, you love the Lord? Amen. You're going you to serve him. You've given your heart and life to Christ? Yes, sir. When did you do that? Years ago. Years ago. I'm rededicating my life. And rededicating her life to Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.
gave, you've given your heart and life to Christ? Yes. When did you do that? In Germany. In Germany, years ago then. Amen. And you wish to be baptized in the public profession of faith? Yes. In the end, sin, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> serve him. Yes. Amen. Um, you've given your life to Christ? Yes. Amen. When did you do that? Uh, about the end of January. About the end of January. Wow. Amen. Amen. It's always a good morning when you have a baptism. If you can't worship after a baptism, then I don't know what to tell you. Let's all stand this morning, and let's go back to the Lord in our worship.
this morning. Whatever you've got going on in your life, if there's addiction, if there's an ailment, some kind of injury or something, spiritual, whatever it is, let's speak the name of Jesus over that this morning. Let's speak Jesus over our kids. Let's speak Jesus over our families. Let's create that spiritual blessing. Let's just speak the name of Jesus, claiming all of that over our family this morning. So whatever you've got going on, let's speak the name of Jesus. Amen. Darkness, 
over every enemy. And Jesus for my family, I speak.
rejoicing right now God as we are Lord I pray that our worship is going before you this morning like sweet perfume God and I pray that we did give you our best Lord Lord right now I pray for our pastor Lord I pray for his time with you this week God that the moments he spent in the word with you and in your presence God I pray that his words this morning God, would be yours and that it would just flow straight from the throne of God Lord give him a fresh fire and a fresh anointing top of his head to the bottom of his feet, God, and help us to receive what you have for us this morning, God, not to just keep it inside, but to take it out to a city, a state, a world that desperately needs it. Father, we love you, and we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for all things. Amen. Choir and the praise band a hand. Just thank them for the ministry and thank the good Lord. Wonderful. Aren't you glad you're in God's house this morning? Amen. Wouldn't you rather be here than a hospital? Yeah, there's three or four of you. Amen. Spiritual. This is a spiritual hospital, though, isn't it? This is a spiritual hospital. That's what we were. We're not a museum. We're not a museum for saints. Listen, we're a hospital for sinners. That's just who, what, that's the great commission that we read about in Matthew 28 in the baptistry. So I'm grateful for those who have publicly confessed Christ in baptism. I need to, 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 um, to do this. Um, grab Brandon around the corner f- for me. Will you do that? Grab Brandon around there. Yeah, yeah, tell him we need him. Um, I've talked to Roger and Charlene Cunningham. We need you to stand in for Roger Cunningham. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, I talked to um, Charlene yesterday, and Roger and Charlene were going to try to be here. Uh, he just could not be here this morning. I, I'm sure they're watching. She asked if we could anoint someone with oil uh, in, in his place. I said, certainly. Uh, when able to get with you, of course, scheduled the way it was in the morning. The Bible says in the book of James, if they're sick among you, let them call the elders of the church. Matter of fact, did you, the elders aren't supposed to call you. You're supposed to call the elders. Let the elders, let, let the, them call the elders of the church and let them anoint them with oil and the prayer of faith shall raise them up, okay? So if you'll stand in for Roger, that'd be fine. If there are others in the church, you say, Pastor, I'm going through a lot. Matter of fact, I thank the good Lord for some great reports that we got for some people that we, we did anoint with oil. We're blessed and thankful. But if you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, will you ask the elders of the church to anoint me with oil also? Then you come at this time. I'm going to ask the elders to come forward at this time also. Others that maybe know Roger and Charlene want to pray for them. You come at this time. We're going to anoint with oil.
thank you. Good. Good. It's a little oily there. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your prayers. Also, Sally Burke, last week uh, on the senior adult trip, had a fall, and uh, she's doing well, but she wasn't able to make it this morning. She just sends her love also this morning. She sends her love to you. And let me do this also. I have some oil in my glasses. Um, Roy and Denise Haney, where are you? Roy and Denise, they're here today. I hope a happy anniversary to y'all today. Give them a hand. God bless you. We love you guys. All right. Um, the book of uh, 2 Timothy, chapter 1, is, is where we're going to be. It said, anoint them with oil, not slather them with oil. We got them pretty good. One time we anointed uh, we, we, baby dedication, infant dedication, which is parental dedication, Okay. And um, I thought, you know, we use water, just Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And, and uh, I said, we need to use oil. That's more symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Well, that was a mistake. I got, I got it all on that baby and got it all on their outfits and all that stuff. So we're back, we're back at the uh, water. All right. I want to preach to you the crisis and chaos of COVID. I started last week. I, I hope you were here last week. And really because, oh, just a sweet service last week. The Holy Spirit just blessed us in a wonderful way. I knew, <clears throat> I knew I wouldn't be able to preach the whole message to you. So I sort of broke it down and I gave you like nine things that COVID changed at Edgewood Church, eight or nine things that it, that it changed. And uh, I didn't men- even mention mask, but that was everywhere. And, um, and uh, I didn't mention some of that. And I may mention one more to you in, in a moment. But um, I, I want to read the scripture first. Um, COVID was a, a, a crisis and it was chaos and it was difficult on everybody and even, even especially even churches. Uh, stand with me for the reading of God's holy word. Okay, give you a moment to stretch right there also. But I knew, I knew last week I could not preach all the, the spirit was just moving in a wonderful way. So I, I said, well, I'll just cut it. It wasn't even in half. It might be a fifth or something like that. So I probably have two more, another message after this uh, about it. All right. Second Timothy chapter one, starting at verse one. Paul's an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. It was God's will. An apostle wanted basically who has seen and been sent by the Lord on the Damascus road. And aren't you glad we have the Damascus experience? Demask us. No more, no more masks. An apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. He promises, I know eternal life. He didn't come that you may have a way. Christianity is not a way of life. And I know you're standing and I won't preach it. It is life. It's not a way of life. He came that we may have life. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, it's a spiritual son, grace, mercy, peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with a pure conscience. Aren't you thankful for just a pure conscience? That without ceasing, I have, remember, I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Timothy, I pray for you often. Verse 4, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. Maybe in their separation, there was a, the, the, the parting was difficult for them. But verse 5, and this, look how beautiful this is. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, the, the, the not hypocritical, the, the real, the genuine faith, Timothy, that you have. Now look, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded that is in thee. That is a beautiful thing when generational blessings of a heartbeat that beats for God and a love for God is passed down. And many of you hear this, you can point to a grandmother or a grandfather that loved Jesus or a parent that loved Jesus. And that heart is just passed, that heart for God is just passed down. That is a beautiful and wonderful thing. Verse six, wherefore I put thee to remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. You've got a calling upon your life, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. He laid hands upon him. Verse seven's key verse for COVID, for life, for your life. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. One translation says timidity. 
one of being a coward. No, no, no. God does not give that. That Holy Spirit that comes inside of you, it doesn't give you a spirit of fear, but of, but of power, of love. It's a spirit of power. It's a spirit of love and of a sound mind. Pray with me. Jesus, thank you for the precious word of God. Let it go deep into our lives. Let us give it plenty of room. Let it not only be the only time this week we read this or open up the word of God or think about the word of God. Lord, help us, I pray, to uh, memorize, to absorb, to learn, to love your precious word. Help us to hide it in our heart that we won't sin against you. Lord, as Colossians says, help us to give it plenty of room, not just a little bit of room, but plenty of room in our life, I pray. Thank you for the word this morning. Thank you for the worship. Thank you for all you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Um, I, um, we, 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 I mentioned last week, <clears throat> really I need like an hour and a half, about COVID, and I started it. I don't mean for it to be the series. <clears throat> there is something <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> that uh, I left off last week, when we came back from, um, from being absent a month or two um, in church, and uh, we didn't have it, which was really a, a strange thing. It's, it's almost demonic. Um, remember we had to socially distance. Remember we, we, we put signs. We, these were the signs that we used. <clears throat> we put a sign like on this pew and then you couldn't sit on the next one and the next pew you could sit on now these are some of the signs that we put on pews and then you had to sit certain thou shalt not sit in a pew with white paper written on it thus saith the lord first hesitations chapter 3 verse 16 see we just didn't put a piece of paper and say don't sit on this pew we were a little creative with it we put remember when the lord put a flaming sword at the entrance to the garden of eden so adam and eve couldn't return Flaming sword could be translated white piece of paper. Okay, okay. Oh, here. Zacchaeus climbed a sycamore tree to get a better seat. This pew was not it. Don't sit there. Here's it. Uh, the, the front row is blocked off. That's no problem. Congregational Methodists don't use the front row anyway. <laughs> Other Christians do, though, don't they? Amen. Why did Paul, we put these on, no, nobody came to me and said, Pastor, these are the greatest things in the world. Nobody came to me and bragged on them. I, I was pleased with them. Why did Paul refuse to take John Mark on another missionary journey? Because he sat in a pew that had been marked off. <laughs> Don't be John Mark. All right. Row, row, row your boat. Just don't do it on this row. All right. I don't know. I, you know, other churches could put something bland, but I thought, you know, that's, thank you. That's pretty cute, I thought. Yeah. No, no, it's two years too late for the applause on that. All right. <clears throat> so I've come up with an acrostic for COVID uh, on the screen. And it sounds like, I don't know if you're a Star Trek fan, but I always go on screen. It sounds like a Star Trek movie. All right. You don't, you don't know. You don't watch Star Trek. All right. It's an acrostic. Write it vertically. Christ, our victory in. And I'm just going to use the, the, the letter D for several things that Christ gives us victory in and over. And we go through them and we experience them. But because of Jesus Christ living in our life, we do not experience them, go through them like the world does or like a lost person does. He hasn't give us the spirit of fear. When Christ comes into your life in the form of the Holy Spirit, he gives you the spirit of power, love, and the sound mind. You say, Pastor, I struggle with one of three or two or three of those, or I struggle with all of them. The best thing, the best thing I could say to you would be to absorb the Word of God. Find a plan. Begin to read it. You say, I have trouble with my emotions. I have trouble mentally. I was, as a pastor, and, I, and, here, and I'll share some things with you, but I'd give yourself to learning the Word and to hiding the Word of God in your heart, to quoting the Word, to memorize, to thinking the Word. There's a transformation takes place in your life when you learn the Word of God, and that has to do with that sound mind. All right. Number one here, Christ our victory in our diseases. Okay. He can heal you. He can heal me. He heals in many ways. Matter of fact, 
it says twice, the gifts of healing or gift of healings. It's always plural. Whether it's wellness, doctor, whether it's medicines, whether it's, uh, listen, whether it's just taking care of yourself, whether, whether it's, what, here's what I believe about this, about yourself. I think this. I think you and I ought to do everything possible to have good health so we can serve the Lord. I think th- th- that's my belief. I, I think I need, to, I need to do everything I can do. Now, some things I've got a two-inch growth in my inner ear canal um, uh, surgery. Unless the Lord heals me, it <laughs> will be um, the end of um, uh, 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 April. But I'm believing the Lord. I'm grateful. I haven't had any of the um, side effects uh, 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 of that. But sometimes you can do everything right and still have something take place. But the things that you can do something about, you need to do something about. Again, my heart is, in my walk with the Lord, I need to do everything I can to have good health so I can serve the Lord. Okay? Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Thank the Lord what Jesus Christ provided on the cross. Benefits, blessings of it, not only your salvation, but healing also by his stripes. Isaiah said it like this, by his stripes you are healed. Second Peter said it like this. He looked back on it and he said, by his stripes you were healed. Verse 3, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. I don't know what you're going through. I know most of us go through something. The other evening, we, uh, we, uh, Wednesday night, we were downstairs and um, we were sharing prayer requests. And we have a prayer list, and Don takes care of that for us, and sometimes it's on the, you, listen, you, you need to take the prayer list. And you don't, there's 30 people on there. There's no way to really pray for 30 people at one sitting unless you're going to take a long time. And here's what I, here, I know, a list, I use lists. But what happens with lists normally, you just fly through them and you don't really pray. Take five of them, take four of them, and really, and really pray for those. The other night we were at a prayer meeting, and we were taking prayer requests, Everybody had something, especially those of us that are getting older. It's like, oh my goodness, it just sort of, sort of comes with the territory. And we were all sharing it. So I just put on, the, I put on the marker board, prayer list. Everybody that's old, pray for them. <laughs> it was just, it was just like, oh my goodness, everybody's got it. But we do. But Jesus comes into our life, and I'm so grateful. I can wake up at night, and I can trust in my healer. I'm so grateful we can go through the day, we can, we can trust him for healing. He can hold you in the palm of his hands. He can deliver you. He can set you free. Trust him, pray. We anoint with oil. We've seen the Lord do some wonderful things in that. In that. And that's one of the ways, of, the, of many ways that he heals. COVID came. It was a difficult one. It was, it was difficult. We, we, we lost six here and other family members uh, here have, have lost lost loved ones, but um, but the Lord's with us. The Lord's with us, and I don't understand it all. I was healed as a child of of, of some things I that uh, wouldn't be here today, miraculously healed. So I trust Him, but I trust Him on the mountain, and I trust Him in the valley. I trust Him in the flood. I trust Him in the famine. I trust Him whatever that we go through. Do everything you can, though to have good health, to serve Jesus. More people kill themselves with a fork than with a knife. Process that. Brother Benny was preaching a few weeks ago, pastors of the church in Milner, Georgia, a little church, about 7,000 people. It was a joke. Took, took it from 35 to about 7,000 now. He was saying, preachers, that he saw a preacher... He got on the ills of drinking, and good, amen, get on the ills of drinking. He got on the ills of of smoking, good, get on the ills of smoking, causes cancer. But as he got to the pulpit, he could barely walk up the steps because he was so out of shape eating, he was so heavy. 
he could barely preach. And there was gluttony and there's whatever else you want to call it. I'm saying live a balanced life. Live a balanced life. Trust him and be the best you can for Jesus Christ. Okay, my point is COVID. Christ, our victory in disease. Trust him for healing. Pray for healing. Christ, our victory. Number two, in depression. Depression's very real. Some of it's um, maybe um, has to do with your, your, your system. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of the right word, but I don't know, hormon- hormonal, you just have, have it. Others, things trigger it. Christ gives victory. Did you know, did you know in America, 20% of people struggle with depression? In Alabama, the statistic is higher than 20%. So there's a lot of us who struggle with depression. And when I say us, I mean me. I, I'm a fun-loving guy. I, I love to laugh and have a good time. But I can feel, and I don't struggle deep depression where I have to be in the bed. For, I, no, I can feel it coming on. It's a one or two on a scale of one to ten. And I know what to do when I feel it coming on, okay? And, and so, so I don't really struggle, in, but I can feel that, that melancholy. Okay, this, I'm, I'm down a little bit. And, and, and there are certain things that I'll deal with triggers in just a minute, certain things that trigger it. But David here, he's writing... <clears throat> he's in a cave. He's in a cave and he's running from King Saul's trying to take his life. And some of the Psalms, the songs, the Psalms in the Old Testament, <clears throat> they're songs. Matter of fact, <clears throat> Psalm I don't, 142 is a maskil, M-A-S-K-I-L. And that means <clears throat> it's a um, that means that there's a lesson, there's a message in that song about living for God. Okay. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. That's just humbly praying to God. I poured out my complaint before him. And it's okay to be honest with God. You don't scare God when you pour out your complaint before him. It's okay to cry, sigh, and ask why. We all have things in our life that we don't understand. And those things don't scare God. Matter of fact, sometimes we'll pray about everything under the sun except the main thing. That's that's bothering us. He poured out his complaint before God. I showed before him my trouble. It's okay to tell him what's troubling you. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. God knows. His spirit's overwhelmed and he's down. In the way wherein I have walked, in the way wherein I walked, have they privately, privately laid a snare for me. He's in a cave of depression. He's not only literally in a cave, and he is. And he's writing this song, this psalm about how difficult things are. But he's in a cave of depression. Charles, Charles Spurgeon I, we have, this is Charles Spurgeon. He's known as the Prince of Preachers. In Bible college, they would sell, sell all your books and buy everything that, Spar- that Charles Spurgeon wrote. He's the Prince of Preachers. Unbelievable. Wow, 62, that's a little scary. That's young. He struggled with depression, deep depression. He pastored... He preached thousands, thousands. They had to build bigger churches. He would go into his house and he would stay all week in his house because of depression. He said, caves make great prayer closets. When you're in the cave of depression, it makes time that you can spend with God. He would struggle and then and reading his book, it's he would come out and then he'd preach with such an anointing upon his life. God used him in a great way. But he said, caves make great closets for prayer. When you get this, and I simply say, when you get down, those that struggle with depression, when you get down, cry out to God. Don't run from him. Run to him. 
run to him. David was down. He was in the pit of despair, <clears throat> despondency and anguish. He was broken. He was humble. Things looked bleak. <clears throat> and if you're in a cave of depression, it's in your notes. It's on the screen. Here's what you need to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. Describe your cave to God and yourself. What triggered it? For many of us, it's something. What happened? Describe it. Why am I going through this? What, what, what was the issue here? What is the problem here? Well, there's some, some issues, some family issues, some financial issues, some health issues, some relationship issues, some job issues. Just describe it. Why am I in this cave? Number two, this is so important. Cry aloud to God. Get with God alone. Get with God and cry out loud not quietly, not just in here, here. get it out, cry aloud to God, say it, it doesn't, it doesn't scare God, it doesn't bother God, say it out, this is what I'm going through, and this is what's bothering me, and this is, this is what's hurting me, and I would pray, I would cry out loud to God, find your prayer closet, find your room, and, and pray out loud. <clears throat> That's what David did in verses 1 and 2. He's in a dark place, and it says he cried out. He prayed out loud to God about it. <clears throat> and God can handle your complaints and your problems. He can. Get alone with God. And I would say number three, find a friend. Christian, find a friend. That's why you need that small group. That, that's why you need that class. That's why you need that, that, those, those Christian friends. That's why you need that person you can call. That's why you need that person who will pray with you. See, it's like this. It's like that little, that little eight-year-old girl. She went up to bed. She came back down the stairs. She said, Mom, Dad, I'm scared. I'm scared. <clears throat> they said, well, babe, nothing, nothing's going to hurt you. You go back, up, you go back upstairs and, and lay down and put the covers over you and just pray to God. And ask God to lay down with you, to, to be with you. So she just goes back up the steps to her bedroom, and she gets in the bed, and she pulls up the covers, and she said, God, be with me. God, I'm scared. Lord, help me. Be with me. And she threw back the covers, and she runs back downstairs. <clears throat> and she goes to her mom and dad. She said, she said I'm still scared. And I'm scared. I, I'm scared. And they said, oh, baby, go back upstairs, lay down in your bed, and ask God to lay down with you, be with you. So she runs back up the steps. She gets in, she gets in bed, and she puts the cover over near her neck, and she goes, Lord, I'm so scared. I'm scared. God, help me. God, be with me. I'm so scared. And she throws back the covers. She runs back downstairs to her parents. And she says, Mom, I'm still scared. They said, well, did you ask somebody to, to did you ask God to, to lay down with you and to be with you? She said, yes, but I want somebody with skin on. <laughs> <clears throat> There's a great lesson in there. And I believe and I have faith. And I love God. And I pray to God when I wake up, I'm praying, I'm talking to God. But every once in a while, listen to me. We need someone with skin on. One of the difficult things about COVID was the aloneness. A lot of people struggled with depression when they couldn't get out and get about and be with people. You need that Sunday life group. <clears throat> you think you don't. <clears throat> you need to learn the Bible, but you need to be with brothers and sisters in Christ. Seniors, join the senior group. They're active. They've got a great ministry here at Edgewood Church. They take day trips. They have meals together. Special guests come in. Join them. Join, Christian, find a Sunday life group, Sunday school group. There's plenty to choose from. If one doesn't work, try another one. If you feel like a square peg in a round hole in that class, try another one. If you go into that class and they're talking sports and you don't care about sports, but you care about Animals, we'll find another class where they're talking more about animals and sport. I don't know. But find something that works for you. Join a ministry. Be involved. Be with people. Teens, be involved with other teens. Join the youth group. You need it. You need other teens that love Jesus and are going to help you in your walk with the Lord. 
I got saved at age 16 on a Thursday night at a, at a camp meeting. I came back going for God, and then I went through a heavy time. I went through a tough time, and I got out for about six months, and I, I forget how long it was. If I would have had a Christian friend, if I would have had a friend that was a Christian that would have called me and came by or something, it may have made all the difference in the world. Parents, get your kids involved in children's ministry. They need it. They need to get it in them. All right, all right. Christ our victory. Christ our victory. In diseases, he can heal you. Christ our victory. In depression, he can heal you. Number three, Christ our victory in daily living. Listen, every day he gives victory. Every day he gives victory. Okay, not just every once in a while, not just every blue moon. I can walk in victory. You say, Pastor, what do I do if I'm living for God and then I sin and I fail him? Here's what you do. You run back to God. You don't ignore it. You run back to him and say, Lord, forgive me. I love you, Lord, I, I, recommitment, whatever you need to do, but you run back to the Lord. Romans 6, verse 4, see, Christ is our victory in daily life. Therefore, we are buried with him in baptism into death. That's what happens. You surrender, you die. I'm, I'm buried with him in death. Like that, as Christ was raised up from the dead to by the glory of the Father, even so, we all should walk in newness of life. That's what it's about. You used to be one way, then you came to find Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now you're different. You're not the same person you used to be. If you are, you need to really check in on it. You need a spiritual checkup. I used to be this way. I, I came to know Jesus Christ. And listen, I repented. I said, I'm sorry. I quit doing those things. And now I live for Christ this way. Say, so, well, you're just a sinner saved by grace. And I understand that theology, but you know, I tell you what, I, I'm not buying into it because I'm a believer. I used to be that way. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. And if I fail, I run back. I run back to him. I'm a disciple. I'm a follower. I once was lost. Now I'm found. I follow Jesus every way. I want to encourage you now, daily living. I want to help you. <clears throat> I want to help you two ways, okay? On the screen, number one, I want to help you <clears throat> in your devotions. Um, Brother John Burnham, John and Jan uh, are here and moved here not long ago. And John showed me a, uh, a prayer journal, a prayer journal. Uh, I think it was this past week or the, or the other week. And uh, asked if we could maybe get a few people to go through the, a prayer journal together. And, and uh, I said, sure, but I, I'm all about it. And so I, I said, but I wanted to, to look through. And, I, and I've worked through day, uh, day, day, day five, day, day six, day seven. Day, man, day nine. <laughs> Day 11. I didn't know I went that far into day 11. Okay, but I was sold, John, on page two. I was sold. I was sold. This is it. You're now, now, we're in Lent season now, okay? Ash Wednesday to Easter. It's 40 days, not counting the Sundays. It's a time of, for the church of, of repentance, of remorse. It's a time of sacrifice. It's a time of fasting, and I know most of you are probably fasting. It's a bad, Okay. Matter of fact, Lent, L-E-N-T, let's eliminate negative thinking, negative talking. We'll fast that. Some of you are fasting, fasting. <laughs> Thank you. This starts, though, Easter. Okay, Lent, it's 40 days, Ash Wednesday to Easter. This is a 50-day prayer journal. It's going to go from Easter day to Pentecost, 50 when the Holy Spirit came in the upper room. And I thought, well, you know what we just need to do? We need to run to Easter. Easter's a big day. Easter, I'm looking at every chair full. Every, I, I'm, I'm praying every, every chair. Okay. But this is a devotion from Easter for 50 days to Pentecost. We'll buy them out of our budget. John said he'd buy about 1,000 of them. I'm kidding, John. But we'll take it out of our budget. I'd like for at least 100 people to go through this with me and John. I'd, like for, I'd really like for 200 people to do it. But you, but you know, okay, we'll make them available. 
we'll put them out there on the Welcome Center, and you just get it. And, and listen, I may ask near Easter or Sunday after Easter, how many of us are running to Pentecost? I want to run to the Holy Spirit. And you can just lift your hands there. So it's easy, it's good, it's simple, but it makes good points. It's practical Christian living for your life. It tells what's, what's so important. It keeps the priorities right. Okay. So that's the first thing I want to encourage you. It's, it's free. We're going to give them away, and uh, they'll be on the Welcome Center in just a few weeks. Okay. <clears throat> the second thing I want to do, I, I don't have with me, but you have them. Do you see the Easter invitations on the chair next to you and the three by five card, okay? I'm expecting, hoping, praying for the biggest Easter in the history of Edgewood Church, okay? There's three invitations for everybody. You can have, have yeah, yeah, thanks. <clears throat> Brand, and the water, thank, thank you, you're good, you're good, thank you, buddy. And I do trust you not to put anything in there. <laughs> Although I would have put something in his. Okay. You see the invitation? T- take at least three. T- uh, 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 the goal is, and I have, um, uh, uh, I have people written down that I'm going to invite to Easter services. That listen, they'll come to Easter when they may not come to any other service. They'll come to an Easter service. There's just something special about the resurrection of Jesus Christ that it's our, it's our Super Bowl Sunday. And so you take these. You, there may be somebody at work. There may be a family member. There may be a friend or an extra neighbor. And you say, I'd like to invite you. And you can just give it to them. You don't have to. You don't have to. It's just for us. You, but, but just we'd like to invite you to Easter. And the three by five card, that's just to write their names down for you. Keep it close to you. Pray for, here, pray for them. Here's what I learned a long time ago. When you pray for something, you lean towards doing it. When you pray for something, God leans towards doing it also. If you'll put their name on a piece of paper, if you'll keep it with you, if you'll pray for them, if you'll have these handy, there'll there'll be some people that maybe God brings into your life. Take more than three. We got plenty. Okay? And take them. They're they're Easter invitations. And so I'm I'm just helping you. That's outreach. That's the Great Commission. That's going to all the world and and, 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 and preaching the gospel and and inviting people. Okay, I, I, I close. I'd love for us to pray for Easter services this morning. Uh, I'm, I'm praying for, for a big Easter, for a wonderful Easter. I'm praying for salvations. I'm praying for rededications. I'm praying that God would just move in, a, in an amazing way. Okay. I'd really like for us to pray for, for Easter this morning. And uh, for God to help you lay some people on your heart that you can invite and reach out to for Easter. Christ, our victory in diseases. I'm so thankful we can cast our care upon him because he cares for you. Christ, our victory in depression. He's the Lord of all. We give, we give it all to him. Christ, our victory in daily living. Be a part of running to Pentecost and be a part of inviting others to Easter. Okay. About daily living, and we'll close. There's an old poem called Treasures. Listen to the way it goes. It says, One by one he took them from me, everything that mattered most, until I stood empty-handed. Every glittering toy was lost. So I walked earth's highway grieving in my rags and poverty until I heard a voice from heaven say, Now lift your empty hands to me. And I held my hands towards heaven, and he filled them with such store of his own transcendent riches till I could contain no more. And at last I comprehended with my stupid mind and dole that God could not pour his riches into hands that were already full. Sometimes we're so full of ourselves, our own life, our own wants. And what some of us need to do is give them all to God and ask him to fill our life with his riches and his presence and his peace and his will and his plan. Our plan's not working that well. 
his plan is much better than your plan. Would you stand with me? Myra, would you go to the keyboard for us, please? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. There may be someone here who says, Pastor, I need to respond to an altar. I need to give the Lord my all. I need to give him my heart. I need to give him my life. I need to give Christ everything. I saw people being baptized and what it meant to them. I need that in my life, and I want to give Christ everything. The altar's always open. An invitation's always given. If you'd like to respond, we'll have people come and pray with you. We will not leave you at the altar by yourself. The altar's open. And then I want to ask some Christians... I want to ask some Christians, some believers, listen, let's pray for Easter. Let's pray that God's Holy Spirit would move in a wonderful way and change lives and save souls and sanctify believers and call people. Would you help me close service by saying, yes, pastor, I'm going to do the prayer journal and I'm going to invite people to Easter services and I'm going to pray for Easter right now. Would you join me? I'm going to ask a few brothers and sisters just step out and join me and let's pray for Easter. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. God bless you. We're going to pray. If there's another need in your life, you pray for whatever that need is. But if you're coming to pray also, for, uh, you pray for Easter. You pray for any need you have. Any need you have, any need you know about. But let's pray for Easter. If you'd like to join us, the altar's open. You can sit here, kneel here. There's place on the front pew whatever you'd like to do. And if you have a special need this morning, the altar's always open. I'm going to ask you then, because we're going to have a season of prayer. Some are still stepping out, but we have a season of prayer. You be seated right where you're at, okay? That'll make it a little easier for us to pray. You be seated. Good. Be seated. God bless you. God bless you. Um, if you're at an altar... And you would say, Pastor, I need somebody to pray with me. Would you just lift your hand? And that we'll, we'll get somebody there. I just need somebody to pray with me, Pastor. You good? You know how to pray. We're praying people. You know how to pray. All right. I'm going to pray. And then, Meyer, if you could lead us in a song after that or sing something for us after I pray. Jesus, we come to you. We trust you. Mm. We trust you, Lord. We do. We do. Thank you. Thank you for my brothers and sisters. We trust you, Jesus. Do your work. Jesus, do your wonderful work. Yes. Do your work. Your work. Yes. 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 All the promises of God are yes. Yes. Do your work. Yes. Sing that with Myra. Sing that with Myra. Sing it out. Yes. Take your time at the altar. Lord, I need Good. you. Sing it from your heart. Lord, I need oh, you. Amen. Oh, that's a great song, I but that's a great prayer. You. That's a great prayer. 
And yes, we do, Lord. Yes, we do. You take your time. My yes. Defense, my Thank the good Lord. Oh God. Yes, we do. I need you. Sing it one more time. I need you. Oh, I need. Thank the good Lord. Yeah, one one more time. Okay, just one more time. Would you just sing that through? Yeah. Yeah, sing with her, okay? And pray it as you sing it. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour. Yes, we do. We do. Only him. My one defense. Thank the good Lord. He's a wonderful Savior, isn't he? Yeah. John chapter 6, I believe it is. I know I'm not going to preach to you, but Jesus had taught some deep things, deep things. He said, uh, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, he said, you can have no part with me. And they said, cannibalism, and they, many of them turned away. And what he was saying, unless I become part of you and you become part of me. And Jesus looked at the 12, and he said, are you going to go away also? You remember what Simon Peter said? He said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. You'll find them right in the Bible. You'll you'll find the Word of God. So there's help for every one of us, and I am so grateful. I need to bring two people to Memory Church, and I need to share with you. This this afternoon, we'll give them, y'all take your time. You take your time praying. That's what's important. This afternoon, 3 o'clock, General Conference is going to be here, for, uh, annual conference, Alabama conference. We need some guys to help set a few tables up downstairs. I think we need two more from Sunday school classes and a few chairs. So after service, four, five, six, ten, twenty, thirty guys, just a handful, find two tables and put chairs around, okay, I think. All right, is there any other announcement before we bring in members? Amen. Good, good. I hate to do this in front of everybody, but Billy, I need to remind you of something. (laughs) No doubt. Did you take that off the garbage? No, I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Did you uh, welcome Millie Nell Scott? Yes, I will. Did you? (laughs) No, I I won't, but I will welcome Millie Nell Scott for Hunter And Carly's little baby was born last week, and we congratulate them. I don't have the statistics. Get that to Susan. She'll put that in the bulletin, and we'll do it right. Yeah, yeah, give them a hand. Congratulations to them. Good. Everybody's doing fine, huh? Good, good. Okay. Marissa Jones, there you are. Good. Come on up. Come on. Good. Matt, you coming with her? You're you just coming to stand with her? Cliff Underwood, come on up. Here, listen. Good. I'm proud for y'all. And this couple's engaged. Isn't that good? Yeah, praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> September, October, what is it? September. September. Yeah, yeah. Cliff. Hey, buddy. Good. Love you, buddy. I'm thankful for these. They want to join Edgewood Church. They feel like this church family. And the two things are important to me as pastor and important to the church family here. Uh, Number one, have you received Jesus Christ into your heart and life? And you have assurance of your salvation? I know. I know you do. Good, good. Do you promise now to walk with us in love and unity and seek to advance the kingdom of God? Amen. Good. Do we have a motion to bring them in as members? We have a second? And a third and a fourth and a fifth. Amen. 
all in favor of bringing them in as members, let it know by saying amen. 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 Good. Okay. Congregation, you stand. Good. Now listen, they've made a commitment to the Lord already and now to the church family. You make a commitment to them. Do you promise to love them, walk with them, and encourage them as part of the family of God at Edgewood Church? If so, say we do. We do. Come by and give them the right hand of fellowship. Have a great afternoon. God bless. <laughs>